What's up? Welcome back to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of Loki Season 2 on Disney+. Plus. Yes, the God of Mischief is back for, presumably, his final season. You know, I think the way Loki Season 2 ended certainly does not make it leave a compelling case to continue the Loki series. I think this would be a great place for it to end. And ultimately, I think the series came on really strong in Season 2 to have a really awesome finale and ending and pretty satisfied with it overall. I think at this point, it's pretty clear that Loki is the strongest MCU Disney Plus series, Loki and WandaVision, really a a tier of their own. And I think there's a lot of kind of intriguing developments with this one. You know, I think on one hand, it starts off a little differently than how season one was going, where season one, I think, was a bit more existential and... I think actually kind of like narratively quite groundbreaking for the MCU of really this like the uh, Sylvie Loki dynamic where they're both literally versions of themselves, but they seem to have this developing relationship between each other. That kind of stuff is more or less dropped with season two. And it's a lot more of MacGuffin chasing with season two, which I thought I would be more displeased with it that ended up being because ultimately and I think like a lot of, a lot of the, season two mumbo jumbo with um everything the tva is trying to do where they're trying to protect the timelines as the timelines continue to branch and expand following the death of he who remains at so sylvie's hand in the season one finale right that's kind of like the key like moving of the plot with season two and as a result loki has this time skipping thing that keeps happening to him that he can't control and uh, the guys have to basically run around, uh, Loki and Mobius, they have to run around to fix what's going on with the TVA before they all die. And you know, I think, honestly, the series, I mean, the series really picks up when Jonathan Major shows up. And who knows if this is the last time we see Jonathan Majors in the MCU. Obviously, as Kang, he's now played Kang in three really meaty different parts. He remains... Uh, Kang the Conqueror from Ant-Man and the Wasp, Mahantomania, and then Victor Timely, which is the Kang version that we get debuted in Season 2 of Loki. And Episode 3 of Loki Season 2, when we go to the Chicago World's Fair back in the day and we meet Victor Timely, I think from there Season 2 gets to really pick up. It's an interesting performance from Majors because he's kind of playing Timely as just kind of like a manic, like frazzled guy which is quite different than how he plays He Who Remains, who is much more charismatic and opulent and pompous, you could say, but really engaging and engrossing. Um, everything with Timely, uh, and Timely's like clear like re- requiredness to the story, there was all this whispering about, did they, did Loki, did they edit Loki around Majors? No, they did not. Majors is all over the series. And again, we'll see if he returns as Kang in the MCU or they recast him as someone else so if you know if that domestic violence trial ends poorly for majors I'd imagine his time will be cut short by the MCU and they will recast him because it's Kang who has many versions of himself easy to recast not that big a deal um but we just gotta let that play out because it's a serious thing and it's going to trial later this month so it is what it is that being said I thought Majors was really great, especially as He Who Remains. In the finale, it had to spend a lot more time with He Who Remains. I wasn't expecting that. And that is kind of my second like big note about why I like how a season two ended, because we kind of get go through the, uh, the, the the time looping where we end up replaying scenes from past the past Loki season two stuff as Loki is trying to frantically figure out how he can uh, get things to work, basically. And again, like, the monotony of the TVA's quest, the details, the logic. I don't even think you have to necessarily lock into that too much, but like it's fun when you're watching like a character try and fix the time loop and going back. Eventually, that brings us all the way back to the season one finale, and we get to see Majors as he who remains again as Loki tries to convince Sylvie not to kill him because he knows that by killing he who remains, creating all these, you know, never-ending exponentially increasing timelines it's just it, it, it'll kill everything it's just not you, you can't can't get it done as a result you get a lot more majors you have a lot more of he who remains and the way he 
basically re- reveals to Loki that he was kind of seeing all this coming and snaps his finger to control time and <laughs> realizing that Loki himself ends up has the ability to control time and stop time as well. That was all pretty fun, man. Kicking with gas. So again, it might be the last of majors, but um, good or bad, he, he I think he went out on a high note if this is the, the last go around, you know? And the conclusion where Loki ends up taking the place of He Who Remains as the supreme person at the end of time, basically keeping all of the timelines uh, in order and keeping time intact, basically replacing the role of He Who Remains. And as a result, preventing Renslayer from going back in time to get make Victor timely, do what he did and become a version of Kang, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All pretty compelling. Like it's a pretty compelling place for Loki to go. And now I think like Loki season two feels really at home as a two season series. And do I expect we'll maybe see Loki again in one of the Avengers films, some kind of event film of some kind? Yeah, I think that's honestly pretty likely. But we don't need to see the series again because this was a really, I think, effective grace note for the character, to be honest. And like talk about Tom Hiddleston being able to rest for quite some time. I think he's earned it as, you know, one of the OG MCU pillars, to be honest. He's been in the MCU for over 10 years at this point. And yeah, I think um, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. And just again, like we were talking about this with season one, but the journey, the character of Loki in the MCU has gone on is so beyond, I think, anyone's wildest imaginations. And this was, I think, a really satisfying way for the character to end, at least end for now. And that was pretty cool. You know, along the way, uh, just some notes. Like, I liked uh, Ki Kwan as Ouroboros. Uh, Kwan is really selling everything, even if most of the stuff he's talking about uh, doesn't make much sense to me, to be honest. But I enjoyed spending time with him. Kwan's just really winning uh, as a presence in general, I think, as people have realized in the last two years. I thought Raphael Casal as X5 at the TVA, great performance as well. Um, I gotta say, the uh, the shrinking box as a way to die, terrifying stuff. Like, you don't have, we, we didn't see anyone get completely shrunk, we just knew it was happening right out of frame, and man, that, it's it's pretty haunting. Um, you know, I think Renslayer's role in this season, you know, Mavatara, not quite as strong as an integral as she was in season one, but it was cool to have the revelation that she was basically a minion of He Who Remains the whole time, and uh, ha- her memory had been wiped, so she didn't actually realize it, and thus we were, the audience was unaware of it until we learned it in season two. That was pretty interesting. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of stuff that felt a bit superfluous, like some of the stuff at the TVA with like um, the Minutemen who were... Uh, going out to prune all the timelines as like a last ditch effort to save things when they get killed in the drinking box it's not like anything like you're super concerned about because like you didn't have a connection to those characters wasn't a big deal um so i think on one hand like this is definitely a more uneven season than season two but the core plot points in terms of like meaningful plot progression are all satisfying enough that it feels still like a enjoyable season but overall i think it's a worse season in season one i think that's really even saying all that much to be honest just because like the loom and the temporal uh radiation and there's just a lot of like hard bumbo jumbo that like it's kind of hard to keep straight the way season one starts where you're just kind of throwing rain to the thick of things um i certainly had to take a second like kind of catch back up and realize like wh- what we are and what we cared about and things like that so yeah again i'm really happy with how it ended and it's honestly a really interesting place to have Loki now as a character with so much control over the timeline, quote unquote. So yeah, honestly, they did a pretty good job. I'd be very curious to know what Michael Waldron thinks, considering he left the project after season one and got a lot of the credit for how season one went. I'm very curious what he thinks of things. Nonetheless, between the Marvels and Loki, we're now going to be in a bit of a quiet time for the MCU where apart from the Echo series quickly being dropped in full at the beginning of January, we don't have another movie coming out until Deadpool 3 recently dated for July. All the other movies have been delayed till 2025. So MCU's in a bit of a quiet time, resetting time, and I think if the, when they come back, everything feels flushed out and 
get some strong movies, some strong efforts, this kind of brief reset time might actually be successful and people will actually feel good about it. But for now, I think we're kind of uh, quieting before the new storm, you know, in the lead up to the Avengers movies. So, I mean, those Avengers movies are still so far away, as we know. But between how the Marvels ended and Loki having some monumental ending here in terms of how it affects Kang, it does feel like we're slowly making some progress towards uh, the Kang dynasty as like a central through line, as like a storytelling device in the MCU. And I'd imagine the Deadpool 3, Deadpool and Wolverine stuff, that'll be taking place in a separate universe, just like how the post trend scene in the Marvels is taking place in a separate universe. So we're getting there. And that is interesting. And of course, we have to see what happens with the Majors trial, figure out what's going on with Kang moving forward. I and mean, I think they should be pot committed to Kang. If, if, if they need to recast him, recast him. They should be pot committed to Kang, I think. I mean, that Variety report was pretty damning about how things were going behind the scenes. But the notion of dropping Kang for Dr. Doom just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Just recast Kang if you need to recast Kang. Or if Majors is able to reprise the role and gets, you know, acquitted at the trial, he'll be great as Kang because he's been awesome so far, especially I think he who remains is the best version of the character. So we'll see what happens. But let me know, how'd you feel about Loki season two? Do you think it's a worse season than season one, but still a satisfying conclusion for the series like me? Do you disagree? Let me know. And for more TV reviews, subscribe and I'll see you next time.